Hey guys, I don't know if you know this, the Beatles are good. <laughs> Have you heard? <laughs> Have you heard that one song? So glad we could talk about underrated bands yeah, on this right. episode of Behind the Sins. Welcome to Behind the Sins, presented by Cinema Sins. Welcome to Behind the Sins, a weekly look at everything going on inside the world of Cinema Sins. I'm Aaron Dyser, and this week I'm joined by Baffle Gabbers Jonathan Watkins. Hello, hello. And Ian Whittington. Greetings. We write for CinemaSins and TV Sins and do various other things inside the CinemaSins universe as well. One of those things we're going to talk about right off the bat. Uh, you may have heard it in the outtakes, but I wanted to give Ian a few moments right here at the top to talk about a new podcast uh, that is coming to the CinemaSins podcast network that you might Finally. be interested in. <laughs> Yay! We can finally talk about the thing that we've known about for months. Um, well, we would know about it because we made it. Yes. Um, yes. So me and uh, the lovely Danae are going to be adventuring on a podcast voyage to the stars. So it's going to be called Captain's Pod. And um, it's basically a Star Trek adventure um, and kind of companion piece. Um, we're starting with Picard, which just came out last year and has uh, season two coming up in February. So the idea is um, Danae has been a long time Star Trek fan, but she's lapsed. And I am her gateway thing um, <laughs> back, in, back into, I don't know why I was so coy about saying drug, but I am her gateway back into Star Trek. Um, she absolutely loves Patrick Stewart and Captain Picard. So it seemed like a good place to start. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yay! So there you go. I can't wait. Captain's I can't pod. Wait. Yeah. Um, so Danae watched like did so she watched like Next Generation and stuff, or she watched the movies? Oh yeah, she what? watched pretty much all of the Next Generation. Um, oh, cool. I believe her aunt introduced her. I don't really. So she is. I don't think I've taught. Oh, she said that before. Yeah, yes, I don't she know. is a super duper fan. Um, and she's. I think she has a really cool aunt. She keeps oh, she bringing does. up her aunt, introducing her like Rocky Horror Picture Show. And I I have now cool met that aunt, and she is amazing. She's incredible. Um, yeah, I hope I'm that cool of an uncle to my nephew. <laughs> probably not. If so, like, Uncle Jonathan doesn't leave his house ever. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm. I'm sure you will be a funkle, uh, mm-hmm. as Jeremy has shown us. Uh, yeah, no, J- Jeremy is definitely a funkle. That yeah. dude loves yeah. being an uncle. Good for you him. You know, I feel like the word funkle. Uh, I feel like it works Fungle? better in print. I it does. I feel like really when does. you say it, no. it's just not quite the same. It's not. So, so Aaron made this comment on Twitter to Jeremy, and then Jeremy went to show Jeremy. For those that don't know, Jeremy got a shirt from his. Is it a nephew and a niece? Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And it just says Funkle, like uncle, but it's F U N C L E, and then it, you know, the definition of it and everything. And then so. Uh, he posted something else random about hanging out with his nephew and niece. Aaron said, you could almost say like you're called a Funkle. And then Jeremy said, well, I got this shirt. And then it was like, oh, well, you probably saw that. But did you see that? Because that does sound like something <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you would just come up it with hmm. on the Maybe spot. I just leave this a mystery. We're just yeah. one of life's mysteries. Which did I did Aaron, mention that on Twitter as well. Did Aaron know? But... Was he referencing? Um, yeah. hmm. <laughs> Who will ever know? Uh, yeah, no, you will know. I No, I absolutely saw the post. I, that's what I was doing. I was referencing the post. <laughs> but it wouldn't, it like wouldn't shock me at all. Yeah. Like that would just, I yeah. would be like, no, Aaron just happened mm. to say that too. Yes. Because that's just yeah. something yes. Aaron would well, what you don't know is I actually designed that shirt. I'm making millions from this Funkel shirt. Uh, just so, that one. Yeah. Just yeah. from that Are one. Are you an uncle? Yeah. Black, Are you white, an uncle, Aaron? White and black. I am. I am okay. uh, Uncle Minnie's over. I thought you were, but I wasn't positive. Yeah. My, my sister has uh, two little girls, uh, and my uh, wife's uh, siblings all have lots of kids. So Yeah, um, I've got... So, yeah. I was trying to figure it out. I've got... Yeah, let's see. One, two... Six... I've got six four, nieces, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and two ten. nephews. I think that's right. Am I missing anybody? Oh yeah, eleven, twelve. I think I've got twelve nephews and nieces. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I have parents. <laughs> <laughs> are you are you an only child? Ian? Not that you if have to I talk mean. about that. You <laughs> no, I have a younger but brother. But they but your your siblings don't have children. He either. does not. Thank goodness. Thank the yeah. Lord. Yeah. Well, that sounds like a deeper conversation for another day. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Let's go Sorry, ahead into and that. get into this. <laughs> Although I am curious. <laughs> let's keep talking <laughs> about that. Let's get into this inside scoop. What's he building in there? I've got a secret. I've got a secret. Pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. This is a true story. 
going to take a look at the videos from the week, the process of sending them, how we felt about the stuff we are sending in general. We kick it off in commercial sins world with an Allstate Mayhem commercial. Oh, that's uh, me. Simply titled Teenage Girl. And yeah, this is an Ian Whittington script. Uh, how did it feel to go solo, Ian? Tell us about the uh, Allstate Mayhem commercial experience. Oh man, you know, it's kind of like being in charge of the Titanic, but before you knew something was going to go wrong. Mm. It was like, there's a big responsibility here. And then you hit the iceberg. And you're like, oh, I'm what's the what's up. the iceberg in this case? Like writing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. Fair enough. So it's really interesting because um, I have no idea about most of the commercials that are posted. Like mm -hmm. even by the end of it, I don't know what's being advertised. Um, to which be means fair, they're doing Aaron a pretty bad doesn't job. Doesn't know them either. Yes. Yeah. So. Yes. This is true. <laughs> this is true. Because um, he doesn't watch commercials. But this one was. It gave me so much ammunition because you have. I mean, I'm not familiar with the gentleman in question. I've been told in the comments that he is a national treasure. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, he was... <laughs> he's hey, done stuff. I'm not one to judge. I'm not one to judge. Oh, no. he. Oh, I just thought you meant the Mayhem character. No, no. Oh, that no, actor no, 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 no. Is, uh, Yeah, he was, uh, he was on 30 Rock, right? Yeah, he was the, it's he Dean was Winters. The King. Yeah, he's, he's, hilar <laughs> he's hilarious on oh, 30 Rock. Oh, my goodness. And Brooklyn Nine-Nine. And Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Nine. So, yeah. I do yeah. know him from that, but I didn't... That was the only thing I knew him from. So, I was like, really? Like, you're... Standard for National Treasure over here is, is quite <laughs> <laughs> semi-recurring yeah. character in mean, like four episodes. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I love, just like you, Aaron, I love the independence of this is my mm -hmm. baby. This is my script That's to fun. craft. Um, it's terrifying that kind of, I don't think anybody reads it until Chris narrates it. And then he's like, huh. <laughs> it's kind of, we're yeah. kind of there now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he can change And it, honestly, like for me at uh -huh. least, by the time he narrates it, I don't even know if he's changed anything because I mean it's been you know at that point you mm -hmm. have you wrote it like three yeah, weeks ago. Yeah, I always have to look back at my month. script and go, yeah. oh wait, did <laughs> I write like, that? Did he? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, he didn't change anything for this. But when we were in Nashville, he did give me some um, mild ribbing for um, Camille Cabello crop top and Bieber fever bustier um, because there's quite a heavy oh. amount of words behind or mm -hmm. ahead of that. Yeah. And it was like, he kept screwing it up <laughs> and then yeah. having to redo the whole thing. Oh, and I, Sorry, yeah, I bet he was just like, I bet I want to hear that recording because I bet it's just like a lot <laughs> of damage. front door. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, what did you, th what did, so what did you think about the the script and the sins and all that kind of fun stuff? Like, did you, uh, what were some of your, your favorite moments? If you moved to the States, are you going to be an Allstate guy now? <laughs> yeah, apparently I just, what an angle to go. Like, this is so attacking teenage girls and teenagers mm -hmm. in general. And if you don't have this insurance, you're going to be at risk for any teenager out there. So my, my favorite sin to write was that the, the person behind the commercial just has some beef with teenagers um, mm -hmm. and a like, bottle of yeah, dried tears um, from sad teenagers. Um, yeah, yeah, my wife ran off with a teenager. Well, loved it. I don't. Isn't it though? Also, just because which Aaron can speak to this more than I can, because my daughter's not sixteen yet. But uh, and I don't know what insurance is like in in England or the UK. But um, it's it goes up quite a bit when you add mm -hmm. a teenager. Oh yes, right, Aaron. If you're uh, under twenty five yeah. in England, you are so, absolutely. So I feel it's like, almost impossible. You have to like remortgage your house to get car insurance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I feel like isn't that what it's kind of advertising? Oh, like completely. you can come it's to just, us very and we'll give you a better rate. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I agree. I 100% agree. I thought this was a brilliant script, by the way. Yeah, Thank you. yeah. We'll talk about it a little bit, uh, Jonathan. What's some I think you stuff? should write all of the commercials. I agree. Nope. I'm 100% nope. on board with this idea. <laughs> it stresses uh, me out so much. <laughs> no, but, but in all say it's really funny. I mean, it's it was it was it just had me dying. So. <laughs> And you're making fun of something that's already... I mean, like, I don't know what you thought. I do think, like... I mean, these commercials are silly because they're commercials. Yeah, they're deliberately I think ridiculous. he's, like, perfectly cast, like, in that mm -hmm. in that role yeah. of mayhem. Like, he he makes them, mm -hmm. you know, better than they I think he sells it, absolutely. Any I, right I'm, to be. It's quite tricky to send something that is so deliberately self-aware and over the top. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you have to be careful that you're not just like, hey, this is dumb. Yeah, yeah. Because it knows. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, totally. Uh, I loved it too. Uh, I thought uh, I love these commercials. Actually, these these mm -hmm. started early enough that I was actually still seeing commercials when they started. Um, they, these and, feel like Aaron commercials. Like if Aaron's gonna like a commercial, it feels just like the, this is just the right embodiment down. of like bad luck yeah. as a person, and, yeah. the, and that that person is like a little devil who's trying to make bad luck happen. <laughs> and Dean Winters is so perfect in the role. Like yeah, yeah th these are these are good ones. I think taking it to task for you know. 
being uh, adolescent uh, is, is nice. certainly wonderful. Um, the uh, the one sin I wanted to mention was the stealing the plot from every CW show <laughs> and expecting us yes, not to notice. I had that. Yeah. Uh, we see you, Allstate. We see you. <laughs> Uh, I thought that was really, really good as well. Um, any other thoughts on this one before we move on? Well, I just I loved all the like the su- the suggested slog- logo like slogans. My favorite was "Looking for a divorce lawyer after your wife slept with that teenager." Mm-hmm. You came to the right place, <laughs> and uh, and then uh, I'm sure. And then this was just about the teenager thing. I like that. I'm sure teenagers everywhere are forever grateful to Allstate for this added layer of stigma towards their mental health, specifically mm-hmm. Allstate. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. And Indeed. also, I'm terrified of my daughter ever driving a car. So I think some of it's justified. <laughs> yeah. It's. I mean, she's, I mean, I just. Yeah. It's a I, thing. I've seen her. Look, I've seen her ride a bike, and it's you know, it's it's not always pretty. So she's I got just, a few yeah. years to adapt. <laughs> she, <laughs> does. she does. She does. Yeah. She does. Yeah, totally. Totally. All right, let's move into TV sins. Uh, we're going to take a look at Cowboy Bebop to start off with. Uh, the new Netflix live action show debuted, so we thought we'd go back to the anime and sin it. Uh, this is a Hughes Whittington script, Danae and Ian writing on this one. Um, we have had notoriously uh, bad luck with sinning animes. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even read the comments. What How? is it? Is How? it? Is it fun? Uh, let's just say it continues. This, yeah, this is. <laughs> it continues. That's in my comment section, yeah. to say the least. Yeah, yeah. Well, tell us about the experience, Ian, for uh, going back to ca- the Netflix show. Seems to be doing terribly. People seem to hate it uh, from everything yeah, I can pick up. Which so. was I. This is such a swing between anticipation mm-hmm. and wow, incredible cast, beloved franchise. Yeah. This will be great. To just wow, that sucked. Mm-hmm. I remember when. Uh, they made live action Death Note for Netflix. Mm-hmm, yeah. That was from the off. That was negative. We hate this. Don't touch it. But for some reason, oh, Cowboy did. Bebop, it was like, hey, we're going to get season two of Firefly. Mm-hmm. Because this is kind of a Firefly anime mm-hmm. for me anyway. But yeah, um, I liked it. I think there was a bit too much build up in my head. Mm. So it didn't quite land in the way that I thought it was. Um, when after the video came out um one of my friends messaged me and was like you haven't tell me you didn't write on this one i was mm-hmm. like i did i'm so <laughs> sorry because she loves this show so much and she's like don't tell me what you wrote because we just can't be friends you should have just been you should have had her like write your script like you know no because it would have been minus we would have ended up in a negative, <laughs> like negative the first yeah. two so you, you of minus never, 100 sins. you had never you had never seen the show no never not once but i i knew like through osmosis that it existed and it was fantastic but mm-hmm. f- yeah a lot of it didn't land for me but I, I think yeah. it's one of those things you probably need to watch a few more episodes yeah. to get it. Yeah, so how was the like the experience sending it and some of your favorite stuff that you were Danae wrote? Yeah, it was, all of my favorite stuff was from Danae. Honestly, mm-hmm. um, she killed me on this script. Um, I swear to the sin gods, if there were robbers in the alley <laughs> when Pearl's dropping from a broken necklace in this scene. Mm-hmm. I was like, Danae, that was a movie reference. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You know movie you references. That was great. I like, I'm sure I'm sure she loves that too when we like, well, Danae. No, I know. <laughs> no, no, it's so there. patronizing. There you go. <laughs> um, sure it was, she, it was so sure easy to sin sure she just waves us off. It really was. Um, yeah. Because it is ridiculous, it's so over the top. Um, mm. There was a sin that nearly got cut, but I begged Danae to keep it and she did and it was just unprotected space travel Mm -hmm. because all of these ships are just going through rings and she was Uh like that's really dumb like that wasn't meant to make it to the combine I'm sorry you had to read that and I'm like Danae I'm dying I'm dying with laughter that needs to stay I love it um and it's just one of those examples where Danae picks out stuff that just goes by me like mm-hmm. this entirely over flex toe i was like of course yeah like, that, yeah that's really weird <clears throat> the thing i love about that one and i had that one down too the thing i love about that one is it's kind of almost a running thing with tv sins i there was a was it a rick and morty i can't remember the first time there was like really like flex toes on a picture or something and it was like these <laughs> these toes do not bend this way and then no. the comments are all with like my toes bend that way i can bend my toes that way i can totally bend my toes that way and if anything like... that's under flex um <laughs> yeah. and my last one was thank you cowboy bebop for helping me discover my new text code for the sexy time <laughs> yep i had that one too. so good uh yeah, jonathan so what about you I, I've never seen this. Uh, I've heard about it. I mean, I, I, I just, I've, I've never really. It's interesting you mentioned Death Note because that was one I remember because I had just started 
like I remember I just started writing for Cinema Sins when that movie came out because we Aaron and I went with the Cinema Sins team to a convention here in Nashville and Jeremy Simser was there and Jeremy Simser had worked on Death Note so I remember him talking about mm-hmm. like the the stuff that went into how they were going to make it and stuff you know and uh, I, I I really liked that movie, but when I tweeted that out, I found out that a lot of people did not like that movie. Like it was, it was yeah. like that was like my first like pre cinema sense tweet where I got like uh, some unfriendly things said to me. But uh, <laughs> yeah. anyway, being passionate and not balanced about yeah. something. Imagine that. Never. Yeah. Uh, Cowboy Bebop, I've always heard about. I've never seen. Like I said, I haven't watched a lot. I just haven't watched a lot of anime. I have no. I have nothing against it. It's just not something I'm. I'm particularly drawn to. Uh, to insult fans even more, I will say when I started watching this, I was confused because in my head, for whatever reason, I was picturing Aqua Teen Hunger Force. No clue why I was picturing Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Got that's nothing. on you. Yeah. No, that's totally yeah, the show's that's fault. On me. Totally the show's that's fault. That's on me. Yeah. Uh, no, that's totally on me. So I was just like, well, I was like, I don't think this is. And then I realized what I had done. So yeah, that's me. Nice. Uh, but I really, I the video is great. Um, I, I love, I do love us sending these things. I think we have a lot. I think they always turn out really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, and unfortunately, the fans don't seem to agree. I feel like Pokemon went over okay. Did I think it not? So. Yeah, I think it did. I don't think it was as as terrible as some of the other examples. <laughs> my Hero Academia. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. my Hero Academia, to be fair, was mostly like, why did you guys choose this episode? Yeah. And and yeah. you know that was a that was a conversation we had before we did the video. Yeah. So that was fair. Uh, the longest excitement send ever mm-hmm. was oh, uh, it was I glorious. Just, that was uh, that was just. I just wrote that down, and uh, the overflex toe. I that that felt very Danae. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And uh, did no one know how to ash in this world. It's like how the, <laughs> really, the narrator is really getting so off. mad about people not knowing where to mm-hmm. uh, not ashing their cigarettes. <laughs> yeah. It's not that they smoke. It's yeah. just that they want ash. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I thought all that was funny as well. I had all that as well. In fact, I think you guys have mentioned everything I had written down. I will say, uh, I think part of the reaction to our Sins video for anim- anime is that anime fans, uh, they're very particular. They mm-hmm. love their stuff, and it can mm-hmm. feel personal to them even when it's not because it is a subset of pop culture, and you know they can feel picked on or whatever, and... I do wonder if we'll do another anime until maybe we have somebody who loves anime on the staff. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's just it's yeah, sometimes because... it's hard because we don't have the reference. None no. of the three of us love anime. None of the I don't think there's any of the writers that are truly into anime. And so and I do think that shows in a lot a lot of the comments you will see are I can't believe you didn't take off a sin for this. I can't believe you didn't take off a sin <laughs> for this. And in yeah. general, we will respond to that in the same way, which is that's not what we do. We're, you know, we're not here to say things are amazing. But at the same time, when we do have a love for something, we do take those sins off. And so not yeah. to have somebody who has like that context to be able to take a sin off here or there, you know, for, and we did actually take a sin off in this one um, for oh, the jazz I, yeah, soundtrack right the or whatever. Yeah, yeah, because the music is fantastic throughout. Yeah, yeah. So I also, it is one of those um, things. Hmm. I you know and it anime always interests me because it does feel like it kind of has that comic book like serial type you know aspect yeah. to it that I find that I love that's why I read comics and stuff but it's just so like at this point in my life like it's just so overwhelming like where where would I start right you know yeah. it's like that kind of thing yeah. and it's like and and I'm such a completist and a lot of these series have like a lot of a lot of content so mm-hmm. it's just like it all just becomes a little too much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, <laughs> I'm totally point. with you. I'm totally with you. There you go, Cowboy Bebop, Asteroid Blues. Let's move into Squid Game. Um, we are going with episode three, The Man with the Umbrella. Uh, this was a Dicer Hugh script, myself and Danae writing on this one. Um, we're getting, yeah, we're three into Squid Game. Um, I think you can probably assume we will continue to do them as we get the opportunity to do so. Mm-hmm. Um, what did we think about this? I guess I'll start since I wrote on it. Uh, this is the episode where things kind of get back to what I thought they were going to be, right? Like with a new game in each episode with like interesting new things. This game was weird to me. <laughs> like I really, I, Why? I, well, no, no, no. I, I think it is a game that's, that's played in South Korea. I just have never experienced anything like this where no. you try to like, I've played games like this with my food. You know what I mean? Like I, I will play. Not in a competitive setting, though. But not in a yeah, not to the death. Yes. Uh, <laughs> True of many many things. Uh, but um, but yeah. So the game was interesting to me. 
Uh, I will say overall, the dubbing uh, in this one, I think, makes it so much worse, um, especially 212. The character of 212 screaming. is so annoying in yeah, this because huh? of the dub. And she is meant to be annoying in the main show as well, but it's a different kind of annoying. It's more of a just like a person you know. That, mm. I mean, we all know somebody who's kind of a, you know, yeah. uh, caustic like that or whatever. But in this, just the the, the acting on the English dub is just so over the top and annoying um so that so that made it that made it uh, a little weird i also wanted to mention the sim the sins bam that's in the uh, yes. the intro and just pulling that out and just kind of uh mentioning that and uh, then shifting it so you know all the sins are the fault of the actual show for you know obviously they're they're begging us to send yeah. them so brought it yeah. on themselves brought them on yeah exactly uh and then another thing from behind the scenes that i wanted to mention was the uh ketchup bottle sin <laughs> uh, em uh emptying stubborn ketchup bottles on empty beds i wanted to mention that because danae and i both wrote that sin uh the same sin you did not absolutely that's we crazy. we both saw that hand thing we're like oh that's a ketchup bottle that will the ketchup that's won't come out of and i got the i mean i get it yeah no i got the combine and i was like i cannot believe we both saw this and that's wrote, fantastic. wrote the same thing so um so i did want to mention that uh as well and then give a shout out to uh my cat's cradle expertise um nice yeah i'm, nice. I'm a master cat's cradler so don't mess with me <laughs> uh is that the is that the yo-yo like you no, use like there a is a yo-yo -yo move called the mm -hmm. cradle. Um, I don't know if it's oh, called okay. the cat's cradle, but there. So what do you use in cat's cradle? You use like like yarn. Yes, or string? it's yarn or string, and there is. I, I really did play this growing up, by the way. So there, there was a little bit of personal like. <laughs> is it like come on. is it like Jenga yeah. where you try to do it but you don't break it or? It is a it is a game where you are making shapes with the yarn based on like how you take it from the other person. So like it starts mm -hmm. with like. I don't want to explain all of it, but basically you take the arm between your fingers and you've got like this little like X there. Mm -hmm. And then the other person grabs the points, moves them around and then has a different design mm -hmm. and it keeps doing that. And the cool thing about it is it's a loop. It repeats. And so you do it until somebody messes it up. Mm -hmm. um, that kind of thing. And you try to like, you can try to speed up and, and do that, that kind of thing hmm. as well. But, um, but yes, the gendering of it, uh, yeah. the, the narrator was, gendering games. Was, was very upset about that. Uh, what about you guys? Uh, Ian, why don't you go next? What are some of your thoughts on this one? Um, oh, I can't get past the licking. <laughs> it, like, it might be a great episode, but there is an inordinate amount of mm -hmm. time spent on slivering a biscuit mm -hmm. um, or a cookie. Mm -hmm. well, slivering uh, what a biscuit. <laughs> yep, yep. No, they were called honey, they honeycomb. They called them honeycomb. Just a honeycomb. That would they be call them honeycombs or honey cookies or... They didn't honeycomb. literally call them honeycombs because that is a cereal, and I know whatever they were they were called isn't technically a cereal for that sin. But yeah, it was, it was something like it that. was something like that, though. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's uh, it's inventive, I guess. It's not where I thought the game was going, mm -hmm. but yeah, this is definitely. I mean, they could have released episodes one and two kind of back to back as a feature length thing, and then this is where it really kicks into gear, and we mm -hmm. get into what what we think we're getting into. Yeah. Um, but yeah, love the love the script. I like that we. Uh, is it? I think it's in this one. We get the red suit versus pink suit discussion, um, which was a genuine discussion. Um, I was watching this video um, in the editing suite for some reason, and I was like, "You called it a red suit, and it's not." So obviously, I have to immediately text everyone and be like, "We have an error. We have mm -hmm. a problem." Yeah, and I was like, "No, no, no. There's there's no problem. That is a red suit." And of course, there's a debate on the internet as well. Like, yeah. Before I'd even well, checked, there's... I was like, if there's two people in this room that disagree, the entire internet will disagree as well. Yeah. It's funny, though, the uh, the Saturday Night Live uh, music video about Squid Game, they called them pink in mm -hmm. that. Yeah. I, I think te if I be so bold, I think technically they are pink. Um, yes. Like, if, I, I think the reason people see them as red is brightness settings and those Completely. kind of things, and it, lo it looks more red when it's darker. Yeah. Um, but I, they they are pink. Like, yeah. if you see a well-lit version mm -hmm. of those suits, it, they're, they're pink. Maybe yeah. on the redder side of pink, but definitely pink. But we still yeah. did a little bit of research into it, um, and there's a song that's played at some point, and it, it says something along the lines of, beware the people in pink suits or something so that mm -hmm. was one of the final straws but yeah yeah um things we argue about um yes exactly <laughs> in terms of sins again just Danae noticing things and grossing me out um the flapping gum noodle yeah so good <laughs> it's so, so good. good um i obviously had emptying the stuff and ketchup bottle because it's glorious so congrats mm. to both of you then that's great <laughs> yeah um and if there was ever 
ever a dicer sin to ever dicer its way into a script, uh-huh. it's the slide and the math. <laughs> I like, I man, even if I didn't That's know funny, you worked I for cinema that sins, was Danae. <laughs> yeah, I would have been like, yeah, no, dicer wrote that. <laughs> That's funny, uh, John, Jonathan. You thought that was Danae. Yeah, I, I, if I had to guess, I would have probably said Danae, yeah. That's hilarious. Uh, yeah, I'll talk more about that uh, in in one of the segments uh, as well, because uh, there were some some comments on that one, uh, too, oh, which, of course, I, will which say, I fully expected. Whenever yeah. you do something like that, whenever that the narrator, specific. yeah, when you get that specific, people mm-hmm. are going to pick, pick, pick. So, Although yeah. I will say, she took all that time to do that math sin on The Simpsons that got cut. Mm-hmm. She was pretty irritated about that, so maybe that would, <laughs> she day, wouldn't have done that day. again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's true. To this day, he still talks it's about true. it. See, Ian even yeah. probably knows about it, and he wasn't even here. That's true. Yeah, so. it's legendary. Yes, it is, yeah. indeed. Uh, although he did he did watch, he did listen to BTS, I guess. Yeah. Maybe that's Shh, nobody knows. Uh, Jonathan, what about you? Um, yeah, I liked it. I've still, I, I've been watching this as we've been sending it, so I haven't seen past this, so I don't know what happens, but um, I... This was fine. I I still think the whole thing's weird. Like that, I thought it was interesting that they went away from it in episode two, but then to just come straight back to it, I had a lot of questions. Like, did everybody call on the same day? Like, it did. It's crazy. Did, yeah. You know, I mean, or I guess maybe enough people called and they said, okay, do this time. But did they call? I don't know. It was just weird. I, None I, of that stuff I, makes sense. I'm, we hit yeah. that hard last episode and then yeah, mentioned it again in this episode uh, briefly. But yeah, none of that return catch and release kind of stuff makes sense. It almost would have been better if they had been like a couple of episodes, you know, where they mm-hmm. weren't there or something. Yeah. But I don't know. It, it's fine. I mean, I think when I'm watching Squid Game, though, I do prefer actually seeing the Squid Game, like I've said in mm-hmm. the past. So that that makes sense. I thought the yeah, the game was odd because I had never seen it before. But uh, I thought they did a really good job with it on that. I just didn't like the licking. I didn't realize that was a trigger for me. I also <laughs> found out I'm not a huge fan of watching con- uh, contraception be pulled out of a, or not contra, you know, uh, not contraception. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah, anything being pulled out of an am orifice. Am I saying that right? No, contraband. No, what am I you're, saying? You're contraband. Contraband. Yeah. contraband. I mean, that's what I was trying to think of. definitely use contraception sure. to facilitate yeah, 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 the you contraband. Can. Yeah, that's why I knew that was wrong. <laughs> but I'm not, I'm not apparently a huge fan of watching contraband get pulled out of a, of a hoo-ha. So why that, that was an unpleasant. Yeah, uh, that character. I think it is the dubbing. That yeah, because I just go ahead and watch the dubbing because I know that's what we're sending, mm-hmm. and that, that character becomes a little unpleasant. Maybe grating. she's not as unpleasant. Yeah, a grating. Yeah, mm-hmm. maybe she's not as grating with the with the non dub. Which you guys both watched it Correct. initially, mm-hmm. obviously. So you watch subtitles. Yeah, she's right, not nearly as bad. I, I no. it, and yeah. it makes so much more. It feels so much more right. That character, you totally get yeah. that character and yeah. who they are. And their yeah. their being annoying is so much more um a a result of their manipulation and trying to feel like they're a part of something, as opposed to just the fact that they're just an annoying person because of the way mm-hmm. they say things. And yeah, so it's different. Gotcha. Yeah. I uh, and I did that sin about that uh, about uh, you know why would you bring a cigarette in? Um, I still think that's a sin, but I remember I did bring up in the notes. I was like, I actually have heard many many horror stories about the things <laughs> yeah. that get taken yeah. into prison yeah. uh, in very interesting ways. Yeah. So uh, it wasn't that shocking, but I do think that's a sin. Like if you could get something in there, why would it be a cigarette? Like why wouldn't mm-hmm. it be something useful? Yeah. Uh, and then I also liked uh, just talking about perpetuating the lie that an air duct will uh, will support a human body's weight. Mm-hmm. I've always thought that was dumb. Yeah. So I've always liked that. Asking your death camp counselor for per- special treatment. <laughs> when he's talking about the milk. Does anybody mention your intimidation ta- tactics? That was no, funny. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then my favorite, because it was so silly, was the show says the the dialogue is think she named her kid yet, and the sin was why would any name why would anyone name their kid yet? Such yeah. a troll. Yeah, so good, so good. All right, we can move into music video sins. Taylor Swift, I bet you think about me. Uh, Taylor, of course, is in the process of re-releasing uh, a lot of her stuff with uh, same versions and new versions and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, what do we think? What do we think about Taylor? What do we think about this song, uh, Jonathan? Why don't you kick us off? Yeah, I didn't. When I first watched this video on the edit and stuff, I didn't. I didn't realize this was a re-release. So I was like, "Is she going back to country?" Like I was very. It mm-hmm. was very confusing. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but then Barrett was saying something. Uh, I think it was on Syncast, maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, about it. So uh, I was like, "Oh, okay." Uh, yeah. I don't really like the song. Uh, apparently, this is a a pretty popular song with a lot of her fans. I don't really see it, but maybe I'm just so used to what she's 
changed her music to. Mm-hmm. It was kind of weird going back to this. I don't know. But she does still have a few earlier songs that I enjoy. Our song and, you know, stuff like that. So I don't know. This one just didn't really, uh, I don't know. Yeah. I, I wasn't feeling it. Yeah. Um, I liked the video a lot. Uh, pausing your music video for this bullshit. Uh, that's a, just a long going thing. Whenever music videos pause mm-hmm. and do some kind of dramatic interlude, it's always terrible. Yep. Um, Taylor's so goddamn likable that she makes casual matrimonial vandalism look totes adored. <laughs> yep. And uh, and then I just love that last sin that just because you say it out loud doesn't make it any less crazy. It, it's less cray cray tay tay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So just that uh, Barrett's vocals yeah. on that scene. Yeah, it's real good. It's real good. I, Perfect. I uh, I am a Taylor uh, almost agnostic. Like I I I like her stuff when I hear it. I just don't feel any desire to like get into her. Mm-hmm. You know, music. Um, she seems like an amazing person. Like documentaries I've seen and those kind of things. She seems like for everything she has to deal with, she keeps it pretty balanced, mm-hmm. and that's not easy to do. Um, so. But yeah, that's I don't have too many specific Taylor thoughts. Uh, I did like the sin that was like, um, "Who's blocking this wedding?" Corky St. Clair. <laughs> um, I'm always down for for that reference. Uh, and then the get all Castamiri up in here uh, yes. was was a great turn of phrase. Uh, Love that too. Very nice. Uh, Ian, what about you? Uh, I didn't realize Taylor Swift was re-releasing songs. Oh. Um, this is blipped under my radar. Probably. I mean, Taylor Swift I will is say a huge. Real- Mm. I will say real quick, I got corrected in the chat. I, I think maybe this is a new song, but it's it's a re it, she's re releasing the album and this is on it, maybe. I don't know. I'm confused. I mean apparently I was get, apparently I was confusing it with all too well when I was talking about a song that a lot of her fans like. So. I think it's an extended version. I can look I can maybe that's I can it. look it up, but yeah. That in itself is mirroring my confusion completely. Yes, um, exactly. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, yeah. Perfectly yeah. perfectly apt. That she's a huge thing in England as well, but yeah, I wouldn't Oh, no cool. re-released song probably um but she's great i actually really like this song um uh, i can't tell you why because i'm not super musically inclined but i enjoyed it mm-hmm. um in terms of the sins you guys said the ones that i loved as well i just wanted to add um the structure of knock knock who's there interrupting taylor and uh-huh. then just start <laughs> singing yeah. was Good. uh beautifully crafted yeah, no, that's good stuff. I was just trying to look and see. Um, yeah, I think it is technically a new song. It's it covers some of the same material as the other song on the album <laughs> she's can, she's doing. But you can say that about every song she's done. <laughs> Looks really like, well. uh, it's covering will, some of the same material. Out, a breakup. I will shout out R B Golbat in the Golbat in the in the chat because they said that was written when the album was written but not released. So yeah, I guess it was exactly. an older song she oh, wrote. Good knowledge. Yeah, good yeah, knowledge. I think that's I think very that's good knowledge. Was. Thank you. We don't sound like idiots. <laughs> you know, like every week. Uh, let's move into Cinema Sins. Uh, we'll start off with Resident Evil Retribution. Yes, they're still making Resident <sighs> Evil movies. Uh, Atkinson Watkins script. So Chris and Jonathan writing on this one. Jonathan, we come to you first. Tell us about your experience with Resident Evil Retribution. When we talked about the last one, we did, which I guess was Afterlife, I did discuss how I've I haven't seen Welcome to Raccoon City. I know nothing about the new one, but I've seen this series. I've seen all the Milia Jovovich ones. And overall, like I have a good time with some of them. Um, I don't particularly like this one. I was interested to learn, though, I think a lot of, of this one does have a lot of fans, though, because it really feels like a video game more so than most of the other ones. Like It really feels like they're going like through levels mm-hmm. uh, of a video game. I mean, it's pretty much just... There's not a lot of story here. It's just it starts with action and it just sticks on, you know, goes on through. So right. uh, I, I don't. So there's not a whole lot there for me to really find all that interesting, other than you know Mia Jovovich is kick ass and uh, it's cool. Like Michelle Rodriguez is back, which is really cool. I guess for some people, I don't know. <laughs> it, it's it's perfectly fine. These are really fun to send though. Like uh, we we have a really good good time. Uh, Chris and I do uh, writing on these. Mm-hmm. Afterlife was a lot of fun. Uh, this was a lot of fun. Uh, we had a lot of we had a lot of longer sins, which are always fun if you can get them to sound right. My favorite though was uh, Chris wrote this one where it was Alice and Ada. They wa- so the two characters walk into a house because they hear a monster upstairs, and this or they hear a noise. The sin is Alice and Ada walked into the house because they saw the mo- movement upstairs. That means this zombie was wandering around, found a closet, and said, "This is where I stake my claim in this world." Close the door. <laughs> And waited patiently for someone to come open it up because that's how you'll get them, Butch. They keep underestimating it's you because so it is—it's—it's ins- insane. Who put him there? That's so great. <laughs> 
so great. And then I also loved, uh, there was a couple of the mentions of Jill Valentine's uh, clothing. Mm-hmm. Uh, one was at the end of Afterlife, Jill was wearing a different suit with a higher level of cleavage visibility. I'm just <laughs> stating facts. <laughs> and then as I stare at Jill Valentine's mind control device and only her mind control <laughs> device, which I thought was yeah. really funny. And I got to say chuckle fucks. I got to write chuckle Yay! fucks. So that was fun. Yeah. yeah. Nice. We all have goals. We all mm-hmm. have goals. <laughs> Nicely done. Uh, I love that that one about uh, staring only at the chest device. I think it ends mm-hmm. with just kind of almost an offhand reference to it breaking during foreplay, and yeah. it just it yes, just it slayed does. me uh, when uh, when that was mentioned. Um, yeah, I I actually much like you, Jonathan. Enjoy these movies for what they are. It's it's interesting. I don't love them, and I don't even like all of them. But there is something just kind of cool about the aesthetic and some of the fun things they do um also probably because my expectations are about as low as you can possibly Mm -hmm. be with these movies so i never go into them like expecting cinema you know expecting (laughs) oscar winning stuff a movie Um, uh i just go into them being like okay this might be fun um and sometimes they are uh i love how frustrated the narrator got about repeating the scenes in the new movie and slow motion Mm -hmm. and then repeating them again and uh just the fact that That happened multiple times yeah, that um, was irritating for us too. Yeah. And like that opening scene, I remember I had to go back and rewatch the end of the last one because at first I thought that was actually the end, but then yeah. it, I, it was it was very weird. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I definitely, it was annoying. Uh, and then I, I the the scene that ended with the the party, and it was talking about the karaoke, and it was like, <laughs> oh, I had a nice time. I just this is the narrator <laughs> just stepped down for a second just to be like, hey guys, hey guys, I went to this party. There was like karaoke, that, and like it was good. It was a good time. It was okay, good time. Fine. Yeah. I, I wrote the I wrote the comment like it was there's more padding here than my cousin yes. Michelle at her yeah, that's what it was. 21st birthday uh-huh. party and like I just it didn't I don't know that felt like a weird way to end it so then I was just like what would happen you know so I just I don't know so then I came up with this it was whole great. I yeah, love the narrator it. saying alone by heart yeah. <laughs> karaoke yeah <laughs> yeah nice so nice pool so good uh, I also have to mention, this sounds almost like a video game. I mean, not the video game it's supposed to be, but, you know, small steps. Uh, I thought that was really funny, too. Uh, Ian, what about you? Uh, I'm exactly the same with these movies. I think I've seen the first three, and they're just very comfortable. For me, yeah. this is like watching Final Destination or Paranormal Activity. I I just know what I'm going to get going in. Um, it's just mm-hmm. a good grab-a-pizza movie. Um but I think this is the franchise that gave us all the R's, like retribution, redistribution, mm-hmm. all of the R's that you put in a sequel. I think it pretty much started with the Resident Evil films. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love the video games. I absolutely love them. They're great. Um, for The Sins, such a good script. Um, I love scripts with long scenes that just pull you in. And I think there are more words in this script than mm-hmm. there are in the entire movie itself yeah uh, which is beautiful <laughs> that's probably true um resident evil at geostorm in 2012 on the day after tomorrow mm-hmm. anytime we can mash other movie titles together is yep. beautiful yep we all live in a umbrella umbrella submarine is great yeah umbrella <laughs> submarine is great beautiful um here's a gun i could shoot myself but here i'll throw it to you for you to shoot it's such a thing that happens mm-hmm. in so many films mm-hmm. Um, and I thought mm-hmm. we must have seen that before at some point, but it's particularly egregious in this film because there's no reason. She's fine. Her arm works. Yeah. Shoot it yourself. Get over it. Yeah. Um, and my thing, my favorite long one was at this point, I'm surprised the Red Queen doesn't show up on screen and say she just kicked him in the arm and broke <laughs> it. Oh, so my instructor was Dr. Langley and he taught me to sing a song. If you'd like to hear it, I can sing it for you. Thank you, Jeremy, for yeah. properly representing my people. Yeah, I was going to say, it's just such a perfect British accent. Um, yeah, it's, it's never great. done better. The uh, the other the other one was about the the other long one I forgot to mention because I had to scroll down all the way was the one with the motorcycle riding zombies and I just liked how it ended like I assume they know that shooting the tires might work but that's probably asking a lot of motorcycle <laughs> riding zombies that was another but I genius that, like, Chris the line ob- the obvious sin there is zombies should not be riding motorcycles but you duck that entirely uh-huh. pretty much yeah. and just oh, focus yeah, no. on the important stuff it is one of my favorite things to do uh i think I, I was it was something i started in princess and the frog where you identify something that's clearly an obvious sin and you act like it's not a sin <laughs> and then you 
sin something that's totally yes. terrible. You know, it's like <laughs> we all know that this is true, but you but, know, what about yeah. this? Like that's that's always fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good stuff. All right, let's move into Luca. Uh, this was a Dicer Whittington script. Ian and I writing on this one, uh, of course, uh, Pixar's latest movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ian, what did you think? Well, how, tell me about your uh, Luca process. Oh, I liked this film so much. Yeah, I um, didn't watch it when it came out. This is my first time watching it. Um, I always feel like a bit of a bastard for, for, <laughs> for pulling apart a film that is so well-meaning and has such an important message, and I'm here, I'm uh-huh. here saying, oh, yeah, fish that speak English. <laughs> like, That's right. Yeah. It, it's such a petty thing to, to pull apart. Um, but, yeah, this is a, it's a great movie with a great allegory um, summed up beautifully by um, the sin removal. Um, yeah. yeah, I wanted to talk about that a little bit because it's actually really subtle. It like is, it's, it is. It's, I think if if you're paying attention, you will see it. But I, I would not fault anybody for not nope. seeing the 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 kind of stuff they're doing with the coming out uh, story. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I, it's completely rumor. Um, but the rumor is they wanted to be a little more explicit with that, mm-hmm. and and even hint at a future relationship between uh, the two leads or mm-hmm. whatever. But and I don't know rightfully or wrongfully, but they decided to to keep it uh, more subtle. Um, mm-hmm. So, and I but I still think it works, and especially in that scene, it's so powerful. Even mm-hmm. beyond like coming out uh, as far as re- related to homosexuality or anything like that, just the idea of admitting something to somebody and then them using it against <sighs> you, and just how terrible and hurtful that is, mm-hmm. and um yeah so yeah that scene i thought was probably a good place to take something off yeah but it was in a moment that was really believable as well like mm-hmm. that was just yeah. it wasn't necessarily luca being malicious it was just a was scared knee-jerk humanity yeah. fish yeah. manatee yeah saying i need to get myself out of this mess right yeah so yeah great film um really really enjoyed it um in terms of the sins accepting the fact that a race of mer people speaking fluid english and sinning the bleating fish but then also <laughs> sinning, like, I will accept this and I'm not going to sin it until I immediately sin until it. Until I immediately <laughs> sin it next. Yeah. One of yeah. my favorite things. Yeah. Um, the I, This sin removal didn't stay in, um, but I took one off for the bleating fish. I don't know why, but that tickled oh, me. Oh, it was funny. It was funny. It's, yeah. it's, Makes no sense, though. It doesn't make any <laughs> sense at all, but there's no need. It just is like, eh, eh, eh. It's like yeah. oh, it's bleating. It's yes. great. I yeah. love it. And the guy that's like a little bit stoned in the corner, just having a really good time. <laughs> yeah, uh, loved it. Um, admiring your crabs because mm-hmm. why not? I'm annoyed I didn't see it. <laughs> um, and I have yeah, no idea funny. what I have no idea what wet pockets are. Like, I I don't. Oh, hot, 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 you know pocket, hot, hot pockets. Pot. I know what a hot yeah. pocket is, but I I don't know the ad, the commercial. So Jim Gaffigan, uh, uh-huh. who is voicing that character, is a stand up comedian, and he is ah. famous for this run he does on hot pockets. Right. And like just every once in a while during this run, he'll just stop and go hot pockets, <laughs> like sing the theme song from the commercial. And so yeah, so that's but a, the, the way that it. Jeremy does it. It's like he's really far away, and then comes hot yeah, pockets. yeah, that's the Gaffigan it's, thing. Yeah, totally. Uh, even yeah. if. Without context, it's mm-hmm. still hilarious. Yeah, um, yeah, love it. And um, et clicheing, you're Bruce Almighty Moon. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, two, cl- two cliches in one. Love it. I had Tufa. a really, I had a really fun time sending this. I love sending movies. I love. I think we've talked mm-hmm. about that before. But there's there's something fun about that. When when I saw this the first time, I don't know that. I mean, obviously, I my proclivity to love Pixar movies is well known. Uh, it is it is my nerddom. Um, but uh, I didn't necessarily love this one as much as I have others. But I think it's a positive for the movie because it just surprised me. I wasn't. It's so different than a lot of Pixar movies. It feels <laughs> different animation wise. It feels more like a Studio Ghibli movie. On it, if I'm being honest yeah, about it, than it does a right. Pixar movie. Um, so the heart's a little bit different. Second time I watched it, uh, I loved it more. And then when we we send it uh, and really paying close attention to the details, uh, I fell in love with some other things as well. Um, I still don't necessarily have it in my like you know top ten Pixar movies, mm-hmm. but it is. Um, I think it's better than I gave it credit for the first time. Uh, I saw it through. Uh, one thing I have to mention that just annoyed me is the just the complete arbitrary nature of the water t- rules. Like, oh, you know, when it yeah. turns them into fish, when it how long it takes, how long it takes to dry off all that stuff. It's just like, you know, and, and granted, the movie just doesn't care. The movie's just like, it will be a completely convenient thing. When we need mm-hmm. them to be fish, they will be fish. When we need them to be humans, we will make them humans. And uh, and it just it doesn't try to be any kind of accurate about that, but I thought that was definitely worth mentioning in sinning. I also have to mention uh, Ian Sin, uh, where the girl finishes her pasta and goes, 
finito and then the, <laughs> the sin is just boblipo you know yeah. it's like yeah because it was you know, yeah. finished. it's so perfect it's just such a great response to that uh love that uh, quite a bit so good stuff uh jonathan what are some of your thoughts on this one um i liked it uh i saw it when it came out i haven't i've only seen it the one time maybe i'd like it more a second time i i, I i'm just having this like inner debate sometimes like with the direct streaming like this like this felt a little smaller to me mm-hmm. than most Pixar. It's not a bad thing, but also I don't I don't know if that's because I know it was sent direct to streaming. I mean, it didn't have that issue with Soul, but Soul also had a theatrical release plan, so mm-hmm. that was more of a decision. This felt more like I don't know what the original plan for this was, and I think it still may be played in theaters. I don't know, yeah. but it just this this felt not not necessarily like direct to video Disney ninety stuff or. 2000s not that quality but it did feel like a little smaller than i i gotta tell you the- i i'm picking up uh that the pandemic allowed disney to do something i think they've been leaning at doing for a while which is to make pixar more of an art house for mm. them and mm. so the films that come out of pixar i don't think they're seeing those as big budget blockbusters anymore i think they are seeing them as chances to win awards uh you know things like that and because they they handled uh, Encanto uh-huh. totally different than Luca, hundred percent different. I think they're using Disney Animation Studios as the big budget, break in the money, that kind of stuff. And I think they're moving Pixar towards you know yeah, tell your but... cute little stories and and that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. Maybe, yeah. but we are. But C and Red looks like it's going to be a big release, yeah, and then maybe. they're doing the Buzz yeah. the Buzz Lightyear movie. So I, I don't no, know. You're right. You're I, right. Maybe, no, you're maybe right. they're going to go yeah. back. Maybe they're going to go, maybe they will have some of these where it just makes more sense. And and this Lucas still came out at a time where I don't think theaters were doing yeah, as I think it was well. Summer. I, yeah, yeah, definitely. It, or bright, or like, yeah, was, was it a summer? Or was it right before? I couldn't even remember. Yeah, I think but, it was uh, like July or something. But yeah. Like I said, I don't know. That's a whole other conversation because I, I do feel like some of these like that go directly to streaming, I, I almost, not that there's a negative, there's nothing negative going into it, but it just, I don't know. You go into it like it's just you feel like it's almost like you automatically have that. This isn't a theatrical. Yeah, the film, psychology you know? of it's interesting, right? Yeah, like day yeah. and date streaming. So the psychology of it, it's you know Netflix is, has uh, you know been part of that, and it's it's one of those things. I don't know where it goes. Like I don't know that the theater mm-hmm. experience to the next generation or even you know like the current uh, generation is going to mean the same thing that it means to us. Like it, you know, I don't know that they'll have those psychological walls like that we do, where it's like, oh well, I saw Suicide Squad you know, on my TV the day it came out, it can't be as good as if they had just released it. I don't know. There's still an exclusive nature to having to make a journey to the cinema, Mm -hmm. buy your ticket, go through all of that. It's a big event. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's true. And at least the HBO Max stuff is stuff that was at, was planned for the theater like mm-hmm. like you like i'm not watching dune thinking oh this is direct to streaming you know but no like yeah. the harder they fall mm-hmm. that, that is kind of the context i'm watching that and so it's i don't know it's interesting yeah. that's a whole other yeah, thing totally. but i like this movie i i am with you i don't it wouldn't make like my top 10 picks are but it's definitely not bad like i enjoyed mm-hmm. it i think it's trying to i think it's trying to say a lot of interesting things and i i think that's you know that's awesome mm-hmm. and uh uh, the video was funny. You guys mentioned quite a few of the stuff I wrote down, but I did write, uh, of course they escaped. This barn has no door. Are we supposed to be rooting for this asshole? <laughs> yeah. And uh, just the narrator having the query, do they have a lot of boat sex in this universe? <laughs> <laughs> you would think. But yeah, the Jim Gaffigan thing, I was dying. I, I knew what the reference was and everything, so that mm. was hilarious. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so yeah. good stuff. Nice. Uh, let's move into keeping tabs. The internet is a communications tool used the world over where people can come together to bitch about movies and share pornography with one another. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, jeez. This is the most public yet of my many humiliations. We're going to take a look at uh, the process of putting stuff together. Maybe some interesting stories uh, from, imagine this, behind the scenes <gasps> of uh, the Sins universe. Uh, Jonathan, why don't you go first? What's your keeping tab this week? Yeah, I don't, it's not the major, it's just kind of, it's kind of funny. So I, I was trying to look up if you could fire uh, coins from a gun mm-hmm. um, like you could, could bullets. Because in Resident Evil, they show that whole bit about the coin. It happened in another movie. It was like a major plot happened, point in the. Well, see, this is this is what's funny. So I'm doing this research, and I'm like, I'm feeling it's very deja vu. And then I go back and I start thinking about, it. I was like, well, in Afterlife, the one before this, they also shoot these coin guns. Mm-hmm. I did the same research. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, very no. possible. Even talked about it on. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Keeping tabs. Yeah, no, I, I'm the same but, way. 
but in both situations, I still couldn't find a definitive answer, which really irritated me. Because what is the internet for, people, if not telling me whether or not I could shoot coins from a bull? Because like I was trying to. Every time you look it up, too, there's a. I guess there's a video game of some sort where you have a coin gun in it. Like I can't remember what the video game mm-hmm. is called because I don't know video games that well. And it kept trying to take me to that page, and I read like half of that page, and then realized that oh, this is about a video game. Like this has nothing to do with anything. Yeah. And then. Uh, and then, it, but I don't know. I couldn't find it. I, I I think it's crap. I mean, I guess if you stacked it in like you would a bullet. I mean, I guess some, but the well, it depends but on I the gun, still just right. Yeah, Be- but I still think it's the 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 accuracy she gets with it is what right. is what kills me. Right. And and I just I don't know how to or with the force like would they go through the helicopter windows and you know it's just I don't know. So where I've seen this but recently was, in another movie is News of the World. This is like a plot point in the Tom Hanks movie oh, that's News of right. the World. That's right. Yeah. Um so in in that one they're loading their own gunpowder those kind of yes. things. And in that case, yes, you can shoot anything out of a gun. It what it does after it gets out of the barrel is anybody's guess. Mm-hmm. And in News of the World, those coins are like buckshot, right? Like they just go all mm-hmm. over the place, which I think makes more sense than what we're seeing here. But there has to be some sort of explosion to send them out. Coins don't have a built-in gunpowder, no. <laughs> so like there would have to. And be- I don't know that they would. I don't know that they would kill people, which I just saw someone in the chat mention that too. Yeah. Like it's just everything about it. I mean, I know it's got to be BS, but since I couldn't really find anything definitive, I kind of had to let that go. Yeah. Although we did still send, uh, just not buying how accurate they would be yeah. and. Yeah, you know stuff like that. So I just I kind of played around that, but I couldn't get anything more specific. Um, yeah, but it was just funny. To, more than anything, it was just funny because all of a sudden I was like, I'm doing the exact same research I did like five months ago. So yeah, that's yeah. how many. That's how much we write. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. If if nothing else, it gives an excuse for you know the character to say keep the change or uh. you know something like, <laughs> or penny for your thoughts <laughs> uh, yeah. as the brains and yeah. viscera on the yeah. ball. I should have looked that up because yeah. I, I just saw that like last. Well, it's been a minute since I've seen it, yeah. but yeah, yeah. Uh, I can go next. Uh, I wanted to talk about the um, the research I did on the chocolate milk uh, sin in Squid Game because I was really confused as to why he would ask for chocolate milk if he was lactose intolerant, which is I think what we're we're led to believe mm. because mm-hmm. isn't chocolate milk lactose milk? as well it's milk it just has chocolate in it uh mm-hmm. and so i was like oh there's a sin here and then something in my brain clicked and go you know what this is just, probably too just obvious google search this because you know you want to be right and it's, it's something about the sugar in the chocolate milk makes it less harmful for people that are wow. lactose intolerant it is really a thing that lactose intolerant uh, people do enjoy chocolate milk um, when they can't enjoy regular milk. <laughs> I was like, oh, mind blown. And then I made the mistake. Well, I didn't make the mistake. We shouldn't have to do this. But I should have, like, referenced that research in the sin maybe or something. Because then the comments are like, you know, the real sin here is. And I'm just like, no, I did that research. <laughs> yep, guys, guys, I, I actually I actually researched that. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, anyway, uh, anyway um, yeah, I wanted to mention that. Uh, although in one of the comments there was a nice, like, back and forth about somebody who was lactose intolerant mm-hmm. actually responded to them and, and said, yeah, actually it does Makes for whatever it. reason, uh, doesn't impact us as, That's interesting. as much. So, yeah. I'm not going to put that in my tea. <laughs> Chocolate milk. Chocolate in my milk. T- no, I'm not no, doing that it. Doesn't, that doesn't seem right. I, no, I, I wouldn't think that seemed right. No, anyway. no. <laughs> uh, Ian, what do you got? This is just something, it's a bit of a weird one, but I just need to justify the amount of time I spent on it, to be honest, and talking about it on here is a great way to do that. There you go, there you go. So it was a sin from Luca, um, and it was saying that a new process is exactly like an old process, and then listing a bunch of caveats to disproving that claim is a clever, funny, and effective literary device, Mm -hmm. except it's not clever, funny, or effective. See, Mm -hmm. it took me an hour to put that together in a way that said what I needed it to say, yeah. I had to leave, have dinner, come back, <laughs> rewrite it again. And I was like, I'm I'm not going to ask Aaron for help. Uh-huh. I'm going to uh-huh. get this right. And I almost just, on like a feverage of just deleting it, uh-huh. because yeah. that isn't as funny as I think it is. It's not saying what I think it's saying. But I, in the end, I was just like, if Aaron cuts it, he cuts so it. That's good. fine. Yeah, so be it, yeah. But it was, I think it makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I still don't think it's as funny as two hours worth of work. But. <laughs> well, it's 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 interesting because, uh, and I don't know if you, you remember this. I don't even know if I mentioned it. I actually edited that. Like, I changed the the out of that to be more like distinct. 
like to give it like their own sections like it did in the in the line oh, as in in the formatting on the video yeah yeah yes, yeah, yeah correct in the, in yeah. the formatting yeah so yeah that's we probably both, why we i couldn't get to of, it we both kind of flexed it a little bit mm. there but i think it works i think it's it better do <laughs> <laughs> it really needs fun. to <laughs> you know that is that is one of those things they talk about uh, you know they, they call it different things um but like you know killing your babies you know that kind of mm-hmm. thing where it's like when you work so hard on something editing it is the hardest thing and at what point do, do you let it go we do have those moments where it's like i i love this i love there's something there but it just doesn't quite work and we have to cut it mm-hmm. and that does that does happen yeah um but yeah not uh, in this case i think it worked i, think it worked I feel better <laughs> good good <laughs> Uh, all right, let's move into the comment section. I want to know what you're thinking. I appreciate your honesty. You're a real straight shooter. You are the ones who are the ball lickers. We're each going to take a look at some of the comments uh, from the videos this week. Um, Ian, why don't you kick us off on this one? I haven't got a back and forth for why is the world wrong, um, anything like that. It's just tank from uh, <laughs> cowboy bebop yeah. oh my goodness people a, love tank they do they really properly do this is in my short career so far the most requested like mm-hmm. non-sin removal and i kind of did i didn't i didn't do a sin removal for it, but i did a sin removal for the music mm-hmm. but yeah man people went crazy for it like, why haven't you removed a sin for this absolute yeah. masterpiece and that is such an example of <laughs> something that is huge and massive in the fandom it would be mm-hmm. like somebody sinning star trek and not removing a sin for the design of the enterprise right something yeah. that the fan which we've done <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> something that the fans know is super important but we right. I've, after only having watched it once i was like yeah that's a catchy tune let's move on but no we should not have moved on we should yeah. have dwelled upon that so yeah lots of lots and lots of comments about that we talked about it a little bit, but I really do think it's just it's that sub fandom thing where it's like, oh, you're doing something I love, but you're not saying all the things I want you to say. Exactly. And and it's and it's understandable, right? Like mm-hmm. it's completely understandable. And I think there is something limiting about I, and people assume whatever they want to assume about what we do and how many people are working behind the scenes or whatever. But there's just a handful of us, right, that are mm-hmm. writing on these things. And, you know, we're, we're doing our best to bring people into, you know, the projects that have an understanding and a love for them. But at the end of the day, we kind of have to ask the question, which is more important to do this thing that you're asking us, you know, that you would love us to do because you love the, the material or, you know, do we not do it because none of us are, are really as into that material as, as you mm-hmm. are. And that's, this is just what happens when you do that. And it, you know, you hope that people, but see some of the fandoms get it. Like, you know, there's just, there's, uh, there's certain shows that we do and people are just like, you know, the, the fans totally love it and get mm-hmm. it or whatever. But anime for whatever reason is, is, a, is kind of a tricky animal. So, so yeah. It's a tricky biscuit. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But Tank, Tank's amazing. We'll just say it right we love here. It. It's Tank's great. great. You know, take us in off here on BTS. Uh, really. I love Aqua Teen Hunger Force. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Add 10 more scenes. Uh, Jonathan, what about you? You know, now that I say that, that wasn't even the show I thought it was. It was, uh, it was, it was, it was C Lab. What is that show? It's like it's C like C Lab twenty twenty or whatever it is. Um, that's what uh, I thought. Uh, that's C-Quest? what I thought C-Quest. it was. Sequest. Sequest. Yeah. C-Quest. yeah. No, not Sequest. No, the, <laughs> that's the thing. It's a the TNG Adult ripoff. Swim C Lab thing. Yeah, C Lab twenty twenty is, is yeah, what it's called. Yeah, whatever. There twenty forty two. Whatever that was called. That's what I thought. It wasn't Aqua Teen because Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Those, that's like that's like. That's like food, right? Mm-hmm. So yes. no, that's not yes, so speaking yeah. Uh, yeah. French fries and such. I yes. don't basically when we're talking about animated stuff, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> nice. So just ignore <laughs> me. I didn't see uh, you would think I would know more well. having a ten year old, but I do not Yeah, Sequest uh, but but C Lab I think is making fun of Sequest. C- I oh, think it? it's, yeah, or it's, it's oh, okay. just yeah, it's making fun of like, like uh Sequest like twenty twenty like that. No, it's well, Sequest. No, you know what? You're right. It was Sequest DSV, but then mm-hmm. I think DSV, season yes. three, season three, I think they changed it. It was like Sequest. They do something. a time jump as well when they recast yeah. some people. Um, God, it's been a long time. Stuff. Yeah. I watched Sequest when it was on. <laughs> I did sense. not. Yeah. Well, <laughs> huge shocker because you were like two <laughs> when it was on. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was on Sunday nights up against Lois and Clark. I don't know why I know that, but I do. Wow. Uh, my Very comment cool. is a really sweet comment. I thought it's from Luca, uh, the person that commented, also named Luca, Luca Viver- oh. Viverito. I'm, I totally butchered that. If you listen, I apologize. 
Uh, they said, I won't lie, being a Luca and a descendant of Italian immigrants, watching this film was quite cathartic. I definitely shed a tear or two. It was the first time I've ever felt represented in a piece of media, and I'm really glad people enjoyed it. I thought that was Aww, sweet. That is and he sweet. said that on us, on a video of us making fun of the thing that he loves so much. Oh, so yeah. that's awesome. It's because he gets it. They get it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah like Some people he does. just get it. Um, the, the, there was one on Luca that I wanted to mention. Uh, says, I'm Italian, and wow, it's, it's the first sin, and I ended, didn't understand what Logie meant. Then I realized it was Italian. Congratulations for the pronunciation. It was so perfect. I didn't even register it. I probably would have understood it immediately if it was with an English accent. Oh, amazing. Um, so well done, Jeremy, on uh, doing the Italian Logie. Uh, I will also get into the nitpicking, the nitpickers of the nitpickers. Nice. Let's uh, do it. We'll do a couple of nice. these. Uh, this is from Luca. Why would the underwater spit take be bubbles? They don't breathe air. Therefore, no gases would be trapped and expelled to form bubbles. If you take a balloon, fill it with water and squeeze it out underwater, you just get a jet of water, not bubbles. Uh, this is from the sin, uh, that mentioned how they, uh, did the spit take. In fact, in fairness, the sin was the sin kind of dismissed that and just mm -hmm. said, you know, dismissing the fact that it should probably be air instead of bubbles or whatever. But I did want to talk about it. Um, I think you're, you're obviously correct scientifically with what you're saying. What uh, what I was talking about was the fact like if you like do the opposite, like, you know, on land, we spit out water. So mm -hmm. underwater, they should spit out air. Um, it wasn't meaning that they had air to actually spit out. It was just saying like, you know, visually uh, how it would be different. Um, but anyhow, so, so what I'm saying is that Aaron is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can give. Yeah, I think we can give him a green yeah. on that. I think that's fine. I think they're absolutely right. That, that's how Aaron apologizes. Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, I'll give you a green. <laughs> uh, the other one was from the uh, Squid Game, and they said, uh, Oyvind Andera says, the average male height is not 5'9". That's the U.S. average male height. In South Korea, it's 5'7 and a half. Lazy sinning hey. right there, fellas. Wow. That's me, baby. Uh, so what we're saying is that it is the average height, <laughs> just in a specific place. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I actually did uh, average male height worldwide, so mm -hmm. I did search for for U.S. and it did say five nine. Um, but yes, it is the average South Korean male height is uh, about an inch and a half shorter. But here's the thing, and the reason I'm going to give this a red that makes it more ridiculous how big Correct. that slide is. Like that yes. actually emphasizes the point even more. <laughs> so all you're doing is nitpicking yeah. my actual number, which can I come would... from various sources. But yeah, yeah, exactly. If I saw that slide, I'd be like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> that's a nope slide right there <laughs> yeah yeah so i think that sin still stands we'll give a red on that one so no, there, you I agree with that. there you go average average south korean is me <laughs> that's what that well that yeah. is tall yeah, it's tall let's, let's, yeah. let's not take any of this out of context Please. or anything jonathan Don't is not trying that. to do any kind of appropriation <laughs> no. here or anything he's no just, no no just i was saying. just excited i was excited that the average height was my was my exact height mm, yeah. why do you hate anime so much <laughs> Five, seven and a half. Uh, all right, let's move into Beyond the Sins. To infinity and beyond! Somewhere beyond my wild history. To boldly go where no man has gone before. We're just going to chat about something else from the world of pop culture that we've seen recently. Um, Jonathan, why don't you kick us off? What do you got? I think I'll talk about uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife. I, um, I, I've seen this twice now. I, I saw it by myself opening weekend, um, actually after having uh, dinner with uh, these two lovely people and, and, a, f and a few other people. Yeah. Um, and then my wife and daughter both really wanted to see it. So we went again over Thanksgiving and, uh, and saw it. It's interesting. I, the first time I watched it, I, for like the first like hour, like maybe 10, 20 minutes, I thought it was kind of great. Like I was really, like I was really curious where they were going. Um, um, oh my God, I just forgot her name. Mc, uh, McKenna Grace. Yeah, she's great. Yeah. McKenna Grace is just so good in this. Yeah, she still is uh, the movie. My wife, my wife informed me apparently she plays the same character on Young Sheldon, which I've never seen. Oh, my wife watches that. So. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think she's like, a, she's only been on a few episodes, I think. But uh but she's like she absolutely. I mean, one hundred percent is so good. It's, I'm not, I wouldn't actually say she steals a movie because there's a lot of good. I mean, Carrie Coon plays their mom. She's awesome. Uh, Paul Rudd is great. Uh, he's just being Paul Rudd, but that's fine. I mean, I I like it. Just if Paul Rudd was a seismologist, this is you know this is what he would be. Yes. Uh, no. So I did. It definitely, uh, as we were joking about in the pre-show, it it definitely feels 
like it's trying to grab some of that Stranger Things uh, vibe. But then funnily enough, obviously, Stranger Things almost feels like a show that would never exist if it wasn't for Ghostbusters. Mm -hmm. Right. So you could go both ways with that. Um, The last like 20, 30 minutes of it, the first time I watched it, um, I thought there was just too much going on. I just I thought it was trying to do way too much at the end of it though i liked it but i just it was kind of it was weird because i think this movie is very earnest i think this movie is trying so hard like i I almost feels like i'm i want to give it like an a for effort Mm because i i just i really Mm -hmm. like this movie is not talking down to people like this movie is really trying to be like uh there was a lot of blood sweat and tears put into this Mm -hmm. right i mean it feels like a movie that was really trying to be some I just don't know that it quite gets where it wants to go. The second time I watched, and there and there's specifically, which you both have seen it, right? Which mm-hmm, I'm still not mm-hmm. going to spoil it. Yeah. There's specifically one choice it makes with with a returning character that is interesting. Mm-hmm. And the first time I watched it, I was just I it just threw me off. And the second time I watched it, knew it was happening. That was definitely better. Like I enjoyed it more. The second time, I still think that ending has a little bit of an issue. And I think that what's interesting to me is like the, the, the homage they pay at the end to the original Ghostbusters team. I don't even know if that was needed. Like that almost Mm. feels like these characters coming in here. And, and, and I don't even like, like, and I, I think that's already like, that's nothing new. I mean, in the trailer, they, you hear Dan Aykroyd's voice and all that stuff, but like, like Bill Murray doesn't even really seem to be like trying you know, it's just there's something about it, and 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 Dan Aykroyd almost seems to be trying too much. So like, it's interesting. Like I I quite enjoyed it, but what I enjoyed about it was the story leading up to you know the other characters, mm-hmm. and then once they got there, I didn't like it as much. <laughs> but yeah, so whatever that means, I it's like a B. I mean, like I, it's definitely a recommend for me. Um, if you have any interest in seeing it, there's no reason not to, and and I think. I think you will be moved by it yeah. in some way. Uh, it's just, I don't know. It's a little awkward at the end. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I think it works for about 75%. And then I think it mm-hmm. gets it wants to do too much nostalgia and uh, and actually undercuts the rest of the movie um, yeah, by doing that's what a good it way does. It. And, and the other thing you mentioned, not needing to do you know the, the big cameos at the end, totally agree. Uh, I think it's a better movie without them. It also doesn't even land with a portion of the audience. Like you know, that movie mm-hmm. is almost thirty years old now, and you know, and I know it. It's it's well beloved for a lot of great reasons, but I'm not sure. I just know in the theater I saw it in, which was fairly um, full, uh, mm-hmm. that when those guys showed up, it was silent. Like no, like you know, there was. It just didn't feel like it. It registered with anybody, mm-hmm. like with a lot of people, and it was just like. Part of that is also because I think they were doing a good job building this new universe and then to just, you know, kind of be like, and eh, we were kind of going to go finish the first movie again. <laughs> like, well, okay, but you didn't have to do that, you know? So, yeah, totally. So, yeah, I have oh, very to, similar to, to, thoughts. Yeah, to reference something that, that was just being said, though, in the chat, I, I, if I said that incorrectly, I apologize. But what if, so just in case this came out, I was saying I went and saw the movie by myself after having dinner with them. I did not go see it. Mm-hmm. I did not go see the movie with them because that does make me sound stupid. Like, I saw the movie with these guys. Hey, you guys both saw this, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, we had dinner together. The movie uh, was after that. I was going to edit yeah, it on my way home. I was like, yeah, stupid. I got time to go watch Ghostbusters. So, you did, did you not care for it that much, Ian? Or? Um, I. Uh... Yeah, I agree. This isn't. I, I like all of the bits that aren't a Ghostbuster movie in this film, which is bizarre. Um, as soon yeah. as it goes heavy into I, referential uh, uh, tribute stuff, it lost me. I like the tie-in to. I like the tie-in as far as like the threat, like the threat that's yeah, there. That makes I'm sense. fine with. Uh-huh. And I don't even mind like the 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 like the initial conversation she has with Ray. Like keep that in. That's yeah. fine mm-hmm. if you want to have like a little bit there, just so she can learn some stuff. But like, it, I don't know. It felt it's like just, for most of it, not, it was going to. It's not the moment they think it is. Like, right. It felt like it was going to be a a build up to a handover to a new generation, and then it went hard left into. We love the old film. Yeah, like over here, Mohawk or whatever it is. Like it's not the moment that. It's not the also surprise casting there at the end, which I'm not going to give away. But uh, there's a couple of surprise oh, casting yeah, moments I that I were, the post credit. I was just like, wow, mid credit. They didn't even use one of their voices, which I thought was interesting. I was like, why'd you cast her? But I get it. I mean, they look mm-hmm. the part, so yeah. But it, I don't know. That was fun. 
Uh, there you go, Ghostbusters Afterlife. Um, I'll go next. Uh, last night, uh, saw Belfast, finally. I've uh, been looking forward oh, cool. to seeing this. Uh, Kenneth Branagh's uh, new movie about his growing up in Belfast. Um, it is... I, the, I truly think the best way to describe it is Roma Light. Um, it is the idea of revisiting your childhood, but with but everything is not on, on the surface is too strong a word. It's just a little slight, you know, like it's um, everything is cute and fun, but the movie also wants to deal with, uh, you know, the the trauma of the uh, the IRA and the violence and all that kind of stuff. And interestingly enough, I think all this is on purpose. Like, I don't think this is a mistake. I think what Brana is doing here is saying to a child, both things can exist simultaneously. As adults, we like to go, oh, you can't you can't be having fun or being silly, you know, when the world is ending. It, it kind of in the same way, um, oh, what was the Roberto Benigni uh, uh, movie? Life is Beautiful. Life is Beautiful. There's kind of that life is beautiful element to this where something super traumatic is going on in the plot, but the, you know, because there's a child involved, there's still wonder and amazement, and it makes some really incredible visual choices. I think one of the reasons people are loving this movie so much are some of the visual choices. And then the other reason people are loving this movie so much, including me, I did love the movie, um, or at least really, really like it, uh, is the fact that it is, um, it's just really heartwarming which is interesting to say about a movie that deals with this topic but there's just there's so much like you know old people in love and kids saying funny things and you know coming of age as a child and um so yeah so i thought i thought it was really really good but i i did wonder if i couldn't help but thinking like there's a deeper more meaningful movie here but i think for kenneth brana this is the movie he wanted to make and uh it's you know meaningful in that way um so yeah it's it's good i just have a little bit of mixed feelings on it um, but yeah, so that's Belfast, and I think that's uh, available in theaters. Uh, if you yeah, want to I, I definitely I I don't know how I won't check it out just because I like Brana, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, I like his I like him as a director. Yeah. But I just, yeah, there is something about this that I I just I keep thinking I'm just going to be like it's fine, mm -hmm. maybe, <laughs> and which is okay. But maybe. I don't know if I want to go out to a theater for you know it's okay. I think some of the I think some of the visual choice a lot of the visual choices he makes are more than it was okay. Like a lot of the visual okay, choices cool. he makes are cool. just like wow, nicely done. Um, so, so yeah, I think that's good that. to hear. And Ian, you, you were, you were there. What did you think? <laughs> loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. I want to watch it again tonight, please. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, there's always going to be an element of I'm more familiar. I'm not, I haven't, didn't grow up in Ireland. I wasn't around during this time, but I am adjacent to it. It's taught in schools. Um, a lot of oh, Ireland looks, the, the streets and the suburbs that it's filmed on look exactly like where I, um, grew up very similar. Um, and you about lost your mind when there was a, a was it so cool. Thunderbirds reference oh, or whatever? Man. <laughs> when the kid is dressed up in the Thunderbirds outfit, I was like, I have that the, in uh, an adult the, size. The marionette, the puppet. Yeah, yeah the marionette. Is that what you're talking it. about? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, but Jerry Anderson. Um, love this film. Love yeah. it so much. Yeah, there is there is a lot of nostalgia here too, interestingly mm -hmm. enough, even though it's from before I was even born. I think it's, you know, late sixties. Mm -hmm. Um yeah. and uh but man, he opens a Hot Wheels container and yeah. I had forgotten that I had that exact Hot Wheels container. Like where it's like a suitcase mm -hmm. and you put it down. Oh, I had and, that. Yeah, right. And like it had these individual yeah. little like, like almost yeah, like yeah. almost like dishwasher compartments, like where yeah. each with, oh yeah. man, I had totally forgotten about this. And the kid opens it up I had that. and just the look on his face, like he's so excited to play with his cars. So and good. I like remember that is you know you a could little fit, kid you could fit 200 so. cars in there but right. because right. of the dishwasher you, guys thing, later. you can only I fit five go watch belfast <laughs> yeah yeah exactly all right uh ian i think we're uh we're on to you what do you got um my question is because i know the answer from aaron but jonathan would you like to hang out with the beatles <laughs> have you ever wanted I to would. hang out with the beatles mm -hmm. i would i would very much i'm sad that i could like i'd still hang out with the two that are left but uh yeah, well, no, that look been really no cool. further because you basically can um so the beatles documentary um from peter jackson on disney plus mm -hmm. yeah, yeah disney plus yeah um we watched it last week some point probably wednesday or wednesday or thursday something it must have been wednesday but it has stuck with me ever since the documentary is so so good and it's not a documentary. It is. What's, a, is it three episodes? Yeah, I was going to say. To be clear, we just watched the first yeah, sorry, episode the first of three. One. Yes. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, yet the only way it's a documentary really is that occasionally there's some text and subtitles that appears on screen that gives a bit of added context for well, you could say it's I even think, more of a documentary say, you know you know well, what I'm saying? i think you they're know? just yeah i think they're just saying that it's it's footage you know it's it's real yeah. footage and i think that's why they refer to it as a documentary series or whatever yeah. you want to call it it's a non-fiction piece piece of work yeah. um but it's glorious it's so good it's just a compilation of footage from a two-week session um of them trying to put a show together and it's such an interesting point in there in the band's history and career um when, when is this in the career is 1969 the right so at that's the, towards end. the end right right yeah. at the they're end about to... um they're going into this with they have two weeks before this gig they have no songs they have a couple of chords ready um and it's just watching them create music together and the different ways that they function they're four people but three of them have a way of doing something and then ringo is there um, <laughs> It's so true. The Hawkeye. So but you say, Hawkeye but you the say that, but oh, man, I have never experienced something and been like, oh, so this is why this well, is the... Because the you're, thing, yeah. you're living with them and you're going, oh, this really was their dynamic. Yeah, huh? This is really how... Because you was are... You're just Ringo, hang- Ringo wasn't there... I mean, I guess he was with them the whole time, but like, wasn't was he not the first drummer? And he wasn't they had, the first or something? drummer. Yeah, yeah, he was correct. added. Like, you know, but he was so, added I mean, almost the immediately. The three of them, yeah. the three of them had a had a relationship that he was not involved. Yeah, with but if you've got to, talent, yeah. you can still be a part of that relationship. <laughs> like, just because he was added. No, last. that's true. And I mean, Ringo, <laughs> Ringo he, did some solo stuff. I mean, he's yeah, you know. But he he Ringo. sticks out like a sore thumb. Bless him. Like he's that's the, he's present, but he's not contributing. Um. But yeah, it's fascinating. Um, it's edited in a really interesting way, um, minimally, <laughs> in the fact that it barely is edited. Well, three episodes we should mention, I think, ends up being over n- nine hours of so. Like, the second yeah. episode is like four hours long. Yeah. Like, it, and it really is just hanging out with them as they yeah. try so to figure like out what they're doing. it's like three movies. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'll, yeah. Have a, I'll have a cup of tea, I'll have a cider, I'll have a glass of wine. Um, and th- there's one highlight. I don't know if you can really spoil it. It's uh, Get Back is one of my favorite Beatles songs. And and also the name of the documentary, I think. And the name of the well. documentary, yeah. yeah. And I can so, see why they named it that. Because are they, McCart- getting, are they getting ready for a gig and they're only going to perform new songs at the gig? Or they're getting ready the to record idea an was album? That they wanted to perform fresh stuff to show that they still had it. But they interlaced oh. some old songs as well and some classics because they run out of time. They're like, we're not going to have enough to fill a set. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, you see... Um, it's about halfway in. Um, McCartney just like pulls out his guitar and he's like, "I've got something. It's not quite there yet." Starts playing Except some chords. It's all the way there. It's all the way there. <laughs> my goodness. It's Paul McCartney. He starts playing yeah. some chords. He starts singing, like humming something. He's humming the tune to get back, which he doesn't know is get back yet. It's and so then just amazing. starts. Yeah. It evolves and becomes the song that we know. And it was shivers just watching is that your this favorite? genius. Is that your favorite Beatles it. song? It's up there. I, yeah. I really, that's good, really no, love that's the That's a Beatles. really good song. Um, it's yeah, definitely top too. five. So the other thing that I really... While My Guitar Gently Weeps is up yeah, there. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. The other thing that's... I'm excited to watch the, the other two episodes as well. Yeah, um, I need to watch this. But, uh, and I think the, the first episode is out on Disney+. Mm-hmm. Plus. Uh, yeah. I don't know that the other two are yet. Um, I... I thought they were going to release them like a day apart, so they might maybe, all maybe be then here maybe now. they're all out. Yeah, maybe they release them all over Thanksgiving weekend, one you know, like one day at a time. Oh, I, I don't remember. Out. But I will say one of the other fun parts about them just hanging out is they will also like cover all these other songs that are just in their head, and so all of a sudden they'll <laughs> yes! be playing like the theme song from a TV show yeah! and singing it together, <laughs> and like or something from Eric Clapton or Clapton yeah. or yeah, it's just it's so interesting to see these these. Co, you know, um, buddies slash, you know, uh, icons, uh, you know, just kind of do stuff together. Yeah. Um, all three, all three are available. So part one is 157 minutes. Yeah. Part two is 174 minutes. Yeah. And part three is 139 minutes. Yeah. So they're all movie length. That's amazing. Yeah. And, and again, it, 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 there's a very real possibility that you will watch this and go, um, Peter Jackson, do you know how to edit? Like, uh, <laughs> But that's really unfair because it's it's ve- the editing here is actually super cool. Yeah, because it's a choice. He's, he's using audio and video from different places and putting them together so you feel like you're in the room. It really reminded me of Apollo 11. I don't know if you got a chance to see that. They found a whole bunch of unseen uh, footage from the Apollo 11 launch 
and they were like piecing together video with like audio they had you know recorded from the control room and mm-hmm. they would find a way to match it up so you could see the person who was actually saying it in the control that's really room really similar and, and yeah. it's it's a very similar kind of feel mm-hmm. and uh, also that's an incredible movie too if you haven't seen Apollo 11 that's mm-hmm. mm-hmm. cuz the footage is so pristine um because it had never been like used or anything yeah. and it was like really high res um, so anyhow, uh, yeah, I, I agree. I think it's definitely worth watching. Give yourself some time. We probably started it too late at night. I was, you know, I was definitely tired while we were watching, but somehow even as just as simplistic as it was, it still held my attention. So I mean, that's yeah. almost the perfect way to watch it because yeah. they're exhausted as well by the end of it. Yeah. Yeah. I think it'll give people a better appreciation for them too. Cause I mean, the Beatles kind of get lumped in with a lot of bands and they, and they did, they did become a product. I mean, for sure. Like all musicians do but but they created like the majority of what that product was and yeah and the interesting thing is seeing mccartney that's that's just that yeah like he is so aware of it in this documentary yeah he's so aware of it in this documentary and he's like look i don't want to do that if we're going to do this show it needs to be something new yeah yeah totally which i mean as a concert goer for a lot of bands you'd be irritated right because you know i want to hear you play like that's not why i paid this money but mm-hmm. for the beatles they'd just be like yeah that's cool to play, play, play a new stuff <laughs> yeah. i don't care yeah. play it the same it's song. crazy back then too because they weren't even together that long when you think about it but they just released so much music like just yeah, so many 10 years albums they were together. yeah yeah they were doing like two to three out al- like there were like some years where you'd get like two albums and mm. i mean it's just it's just the, the music was just because like dylan would release like three albums it's just a very different time period and now it's like if you get an album every five years from somebody like that's that's quick looking at you at it's crazy i just uh I, yeah. I came away from it even more convinced than ever that that mccartney is the greatest pop writer of all time mm-hmm. like yeah. he's just the great he's oh, just, it's just he's ridiculous he's i mean incredible in friends Prince is in that conversation, but no, I think McCartney's right there. Correct, Mm -hmm. correct. Um, And what's interesting is you put him with Lennon, I think you get something really fabulous because Lennon is this art, you know, this artsy Mm -hmm. mind and he wants to, you know, uh, do weird things. And I just, I think them together was, I mean, obviously I'm not, I'm not saying anything anybody hasn't said before. Um, Hey guys, I don't know if you know this, the Beatles are good. (laughs) Have you heard? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Have you heard that one song? So glad we could talk about underrated bands on today's episode. (laughs) Have you heard of the the Beatles? They are amazing. They are amazing. Did you know that... You you get people that will say they're underrated, though. It's like every time somebody asks a question on Twitter, like, what's the most underrated film? And somebody will be like, you know, Saving Private Ryan actually is underrated because, you know, and it's just like... I'm sure you you have somebody You're right, Ian. You can't, because you were thinking you were starting to say this, but you can blow some people people's mind still oh, with, yeah, yeah, with yes. letting them yes. know that Beatles is a pun like people yeah. don't realize that it's the, not Beatles like the Beatles that run around the ground yeah. it's actually beat like a yeah. music beat yeah music beat. So, yeah, yeah. there's somebody listening to this right now that just had their mind blown I'm telling uh-huh. you people well, people don't realize that yeah. it's a clever band That's title true. yeah well, and especially there was a lot of because there was a lot of bands at the time named after like animals and mm-hmm. insects and stuff yeah, like that. The so I assume people just kind of yep. lumped them in. Yeah, the monkeys, yep. the, the birds, yeah. possums, so, yeah. <laughs> the possums. Sure. Yeah. Uh huh. The, the raccoons. Love the Everybody possums. remembers the raccoons. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Song about love. <laughs> That song about love. <laughs> that one song hey. about love they did? Yeah, yeah, totally. Well, there you go. That is uh, Get Back. Uh, all three parts are available on Disney+. Plus. Belfast is in theaters and Ghost, Bas- Ghost Bastards. <laughs> nope. Definitely not that. That is not the title. That maybe might fit more than you think. Uh, Ghost, Ghost Bastards. Ghost Busters Afterlife. Uh, also still available in theaters. Oh, no. That's going to wrap it up for Behind the Sins this week. Don't forget to make sure you're subscribed and go ahead and leave a comment or rating as well. If you've got any you want to send us you can do that you can mail it to p.o box 881 republic missouri 65738 you can also hang out with us on twitter i'm at aaron dicer he is at wits end oh he's <laughs> w-h-i-t-t-s-i-n-n-e-d and at sam loomis 13 so for jonathan watkins ian whittington a stubborn ketchup bottle and myself we will see you <laughs> next week happy safety razor day thanks for listening Send any feedback to bts at cinemasins.com and be sure to subscribe, rate, and comment. Find more ways to connect by visiting cinemasins.com slash bts. What are you guys doing on Wednesday, by the way? I saw that you're all out. We're going to Silver Dollar City. Nice. We're going to take Ian to an amusement park. Yeah. Out of all the amusement parks you could go to in the States, congrats on getting to go to Silver Dollar City. It's one of the best. It really is. It's not Universal Studios. No, it is not that. It is not a Florida theme park. Or Disney. It is not an Orlando theme park.
That is true. No, I just, I don't think, I, I don't like roller coasters. So like yeah. traditional theme parks like that are just, they do nothing for me because it's all like puke rides. I just, almost every ride gives me some kind of, I'm not fun to go with anywhere really <laughs> is what it comes down to. <laughs> So where are you staying with Aaron the whole time? Like yeah. he's just like he's putting you up for eight weeks. Possibly, depending on how sick he gets uh, of me. Not happening. <laughs> Even after you admitted to liking Amazing, saying Amazing Spider-Man Two was your favorite movie ever. That I have never had a take that has offended you in invert in, in quotation marks quite as much as that. I love opinions like that, though. I love. I just. I love people. I like that every movie has a fan. I like sure. has a fan mm-hmm. base. I know it has more than one fan. I've talked to actually several people that really, really enjoy that. Yeah, and I think uh, it's... most of them are younger than you, even though I know you're not old. But <laughs> thank you. Um, no, I'm just saying like most of them yeah. are like they were ten. No, you yeah, know, because when it, yeah, it's going to feel more dated the younger that you are. But and I think it's because I watched them back to back, like the first three back to back, and then Amazing Spider-Man like, one and two, and yeah, they just hold up like... so much better. I didn't like Spider-Man 3, with the exception of Thomas Hayden Church. I think Thomas Hayden Church is really good in that movie. Yeah. But, and I love, the, I love the Sandman effect. That effect is gorgeous. In fact, that's the only uh, thing that me and my buddy Sean kind of praised about it. It looks awful in the trailer for the new Spider-Man movie. <laughs> I, I don't know if it's going to be awful, because it's hard to tell with trailers. But yeah, it's crazy. I mean, there's a lot going Wait, on in that trailer. What, Sandman's in the new Spider-Man movie? I'm just kidding. Oh, I'm just. Well, no, I'm just kidding. Oh, that was a joke. Oh, that was a joke. Oh, <laughs> I went ahead and got a ticket for four o'clock on the seventeenth to see that movie because they were selling out so fast. Mm-hmm. Oh wow! I mean, it's like Star Wars. Like that's gonna be like them. That's gonna be huge. Yeah, I, I snagged my ticket this morning. It's not that crazy here. I was able to get a pretty good seat for Thursday. Oh, show. I got I got to find. See, the four o'clock on the seventeenth, that was fine. But I, but it was like all the Thursday night stuff was just like it was. I would have been sitting in the front row. Yeah. Um. So, but I did that, and the main, and then I'm probably not going to be on Twitter like that week, because, <laughs> because it's yeah. just that that's going to be the thing, right? It's just mm-hmm. gonna you're going to go on, and whether you meant to or not, it's going to be like you know, Toby and Kristen or Kirsten are in the movie, you know, it'll yeah. be something like that. And I just I don't want to, you know, I don't even I'm can not even believe, that excited about can it. Can you believe all three Spider Men did a threesome yeah. together? Like I did I'm not yeah. see that coming. Yeah, I literally, <laughs> maybe did that. Yeah. <laughs> At what point is there anything left to spoil? I, well, I think there's probably plenty because I'd very the tra- I mean, Marvel trailers rarely, honest in my opinion, rarely give away too much. Like it, like even if they seem to, you go see it and you're like, oh wow, I didn't see that coming. You know, yeah. they kind of trick you. But like, I'm not going to be shocked if they're not in it. Like that's not no, going to surprise me at all. That. Not at all. Yeah. But um, I'm not even that excited about it. But. I don't want to be spoiled, so I'm yeah, just going to go see it. I mean, I expect you know? Tom Holland to be in it. And I love Spider-Man. It. Spider-Man's a huge part of my you know, pop culture makeup, so I'm never not going to go see a Spider-Man movie. Although, oddly enough, Amazing Spider-Man 2 is the only one I've never seen in the theater. Uh, and that um, was just because I don't remember what no, was I going didn't. on that summer. I think I was just busy with other things, and nobody liked it. So I was like, I can wait. <laughs> But I do agree. I, I think there are things in Spider-Man 1 and 2 that don't hold up. I mean, like I, I think Green Goblin looks like a Power Rangers villain. He does. And uh, But I love but, but I love Willem Dafoe in the role. Um, I do like Maguire and Dunstan in that one better than the other two, because it really does seem like they just don't like working together. And I don't know if that's true. I have no idea if that's the truth. But it, it kind of they feels like, like don't even screen. feel There's like no they're chemistry. in the same scene together. Like, yeah. And, uh, but, but everything you complained about, it's funny. It's in the comics. Like you were talking about, I don't like Gwen Stacy died. It's like, yeah, but that was going to happen because oh, she no, dies in the, in the comics. comics. It just doesn't, like yeah. in the comics, you have so much to pull from and you've got so well, many different branches have, like, to go off in. I don't try to think of when she comes into it. That's probably like a hundred issues. And that's of, exactly what I mean. Like we've had two yeah. films with her. They're finally set up and kind of in a good ish place. Yeah. Killer. And it just doesn't feel out. I think. And I think, too, the part I have a problem with in 2 mainly is when he loses his powers. Like, the way they handle that is really weird. Oh, you and, can easily forget it even happens. Yeah, and then 3 is just a mess. But, like, Sam Raimi's direction is so much better than Mark Webb's. Like, I mean, and it's just two different filmmakers. I'm not saying mm-hmm. Mark Webb's a bad filmmaker. There's two very different types of filmmakers. I mean... He'll come at us. He will email us and say, hey... Uh, well, I already talked about how I don't like 500 Days of Summer when we when we send I love that. that so. Film so much. 
I really do. You know, it is interesting. The Spider-Man conversation is interesting because I, I think in many ways it can also talk about your priorities for like what gets you in a movie, right? Like Absolutely. Because yeah. you can be in agreement on what works and doesn't work and still have different opinions on which ones are your favorite because the stuff that works for you well, that is your favorite kind of thing. Like I, for me, I like them all pretty much the same. I think general consensus is that uh, the, the Spider-Man 2 is probably the best of those, you know, early movies. Well, but... depends on if you're counting this or not, but I think Into the Spider-Verse blows them all well, sure, away. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, the, absolutely. Sure. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is a Spider-Man movie. Absolutely, and 100%. I, that, yeah. that is 100% my favorite Spider-Man yeah. movie. But yes, if I had to pick my next one, it's probably Spider-Man 2. I will say Homecoming is up there, too. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't like Far From Home, and that kind of takes some of Homecoming down for me. Homecoming is great. Homecoming is a great movie. But Homecoming's really fun, and like Michael Keaton's so good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I just don't like that final battle. It's just, it's not well shot. It's definitely it's, dark, but that's kind of confusing when Tom Holland what's is going on. Like squashed and crushed, but, and I've never seen anxiety in a comic book movie like that. He has like a full on oh, panic yeah, attack. Yeah, yeah. It's insane. Well, like, and that scene in the car with the two of them, <laughs> so good. That's the stuff. For me, I enjoy them about the same. I do tend to prioritize uh, ca- like character movement and actors and theme and that kind of stuff. And I think the the Garfield ones uh, hit that stuff for me really well. Uh, I think Garfield is a great actor, and I love him and Emma Stone together. I think they're 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 both really good. They weren't given a a, a lot of um, great stuff to do, which is unfortunate. Uh, but uh, but I do like them. But I think yeah, they all end up it's about weird, the same. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's weird because it's like Sam Raimi. I mean, in my opinion, Sam Raimi's the best director that has done Spider Man. Yeah. Like, if you were to like to compare Sam Raimi to Mark Webb to John Wall, like, I don't know. Maybe you could compare Webb. I don't think I compare Wall to him, though. Although I will say, Into the Spider Verse was what's their names, right? It was Lord and Miller. Well, actually, I don't know who directed that. I know who produced it. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Yeah, Lord and but, Miller um, produced it. So I, I remember when the first, but Garfield might be the best actor to play the role. Yeah, but I still he's my think favorite. Holland. I still think Holland's my like just because he captures. I like. I just he captures the high school element so well. Definitely, I McGuire's think somebody... my least. I've never been a McGuire fan, but I mean he's fine as Spider Man. But I've never been like. I yeah, mean, he works okay. so it's weird. Yeah. It's weird that two is. But I think the reason two for a lot of people. It's because Molina is so fucking good. Yeah, he like, definitely. Molina you get a good villain, and it immediately elevates killed. your superhero film. Well, in Doctor, in Doctor Octopus. I, well, a lot of people try to say Green Goblin would be like Spider Man's Joker, but I think it's I, Doc Ock's always been one of my favorites, and uh, he has such a good rogues gallery though. Like you could make you could make like fifty Spider Man movies and never repeat a villain. Yeah, and yet they can't get the Sinister Six right. When Amazing Spider Man got announced with uh, Garfield, I was a little sad because I did want Raimi to get to do Spider Man Four because Spider Man Three was taken out of his hand. I mean, like he he had to fight so much on that. Yeah, they just said you have probably to do why Venom. Four never. But what's crazy is they spent. Yeah, he yeah he had no. He was going to do Vulture. He was going to mm. do Vulture and Sandman, uh, which actually made sense as a team up. A uh, Venom and Sandman makes no sense. But anyways, he had no interest in doing it. You watch that movie. You can even like feel the hate <laughs> just coming <laughs> coming off the screen, yeah, like whenever the Venom's there, you know, involved. he's just like, "This is yeah. dumb," because um, because there's more there's more care given to the Harry Osborn stuff, you know. But um, mm-hmm. so it would have been cool to see him do a fourth one. But I like the first Amazing Spider-Man overall. I think it's fun. I just I didn't like the second one. They try to do too much in it. I I don't like Jamie Fox in it, and uh, so yeah. And I do, but I do like. But Garfield and Stone are so good together, mm-hmm. like that alone mm-hmm. yeah i agree you know i i get why people can enjoy it it's just thank you <laughs> i don't usually get curious about box office but since post pandemic or you know during the pandemic it's just been interesting to see how things do because like like ghostbusters like the fact that it only dropped like 40 percent like that's unbelievable like if you compare it to like that's mm-hmm. like one of the best holdovers uh you know yeah i think everybody's this... trying to figure out the new math and and what it means it's just and it's, it's so crazy weird. Yeah. well and they also they also spent less on it so uh, that probably yeah. is why it's factoring in because like in canto i mean it did fine but like if you yeah. compare it to like other 40, like moana yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah but like moana you know i don't <clears> know what it opened up to or frozen you know when they were released on thanksgiving but I don't know. Did you see Encanto? Yes. Yeah. 
I don't know if you guys are going to talk about it later. That's fine. Was it? Any, can you talk about it now? Um, was it? Yeah, any good? I mean, briefly, I can just say I loved it. You know, I thought it was great. Cool. So surprise. Uh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I just if it, I, I I don't really know what it's about. I, I don't know that I've even seen. I maybe I've seen a trailer, but um, I don't know. My daughter, my daughter wanted to go see Ghostbusters, so I went and saw that again. She has she loves Stranger Things. Like loves Stranger Things. Oh, and that is basically a Stranger Things movie more than it is a Ghostbusters movie. I disagree with that. Well, Stranger Things was basically a Ghostbuster TV yes. show. So <laughs> exactly, that's what that's why one hundred percent I disagree with that. Uh, Moana made eighty-two million opening Thanksgiving yeah. weekend. Yeah, oof. I knew Moana was huge. That's big. Yep. That might be actually. That honestly might. I haven't really thought about it, but that might be my favorite. That's one of my favorite animated Disney films. It's it's up there. Like it's in the conversation. I'm not talking about. I'm not. I I could put Pixar separate. Yeah. Like Disney's canon animated films, like starting with Snow White up through. I guess Encanto, right? Encanto is Disney, mm-hmm. right? It's not Pixar. It sure is. Uh, we did see the big red trailer or seeing red, seeing red, mm-hmm. uh, which is the new. That'll be the. That's actually going to the theater, I think. Yep. Yep. Uh, so. Frozen made ninety three by the end of uh, Thanksgiving. Oh, week. Frozen fr- was Frozen two also Thanksgiving. Oh, about Frozen. I don't remember two. if it was Frozen two is the highest grossing animated film, right, or something like that. One hundred and twenty seven million for Frozen two opening. I've never seen that again. I didn't. I wasn't involved in the Sins video. I know Chris said it made a lot more sense the second time, so in that sense, he enjoyed it a little more. I hear. I've heard a lot of people say that they think it's better than Frozen, but nah. I don't know. Nah, it's fine. It's got. I, its I, I, I don't agree with that. I don't yeah. think I could ever see it that way. I yeah. think Frozen. I mean, Disney just had that. I think their run in the 2010s, mid aughts, whatever, is kind of un. It's not talked about as much, but like Tangled was great. No, it's great. Wreck-It Zootopia Ralph. is great. Like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Zootopia might be, that's, that's up there too. Mm-hmm. Like that's one of my faves. Like uh, Zootopia is so good. It's like a, and it has like a, actually has like a mystery in it, mm-hmm. like a full on like murder mystery in it. It's crazy. That movie scared my daughter though. That's the only thing that sucked about that was she got, yeah. she, she was like maybe four when that came out and that just, it kind of freaked her out. So I felt bad. So this is uh, Walt Disney Animation Studios releases uh, of the last decade, starting with Tangled in 2010. And you tell me where the weak link in this is. Uh, Tangled, Winnie the Pooh, Wreck-It Ralph, Frozen, Big Hero 6, Zootopia, Moana, Ralph Breaks the Internet, Frozen 2, Raya and the Last Dragon, and Encanto. It starts with Ralph Breaks the Internet. Because Ralph Breaks the Internet I thought was okay. Yeah. Frozen Two was okay. I haven't seen the other two, so I could love Raya. I could love Encanto, but yeah, I would think the weak link of all those is 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 Ralph breaks the I internet. Think so now that that Winnie Pooh, the Winnie the Pooh movie, I forgot about that. That was like a really short movie too. It was yeah. like a. It's good though. It, like, it's really good. Yeah, I think no, I, we saw it. I remember we went and saw it, but I just remember it was like sixty five minutes or something. It yeah. was like wow. <laughs> Like so glad I just paid twenty five dollars for us all to go. Like, see <laughs> Man, some shit. movies I wish were sixty five minutes. Yeah. If you, I'm just looking. If you, you could even throw Bolt in. Bolt was before Tangled. In that is, and qu- Bolt's not bad. No, Bolt's, Bolt's a good, good movie. Uh, like that yeah. is quite a run. Bolt, Tangled, Winnie the Pooh, Wreck It Ralph, Frozen, Big Hero Six, Utopia, Moana. Like that's quite I a would run. Throw, yeah, I would throw Bolt in there because I think Bolt was a hit. So yeah. Bolt's kind of when they started coming back with yeah. those because like before that you had like Chicken Little, mm-hmm. Meet the Robinsons, and, like, Home. Home on the Range. Meet the Robinsons, though, I don't mind, but it, but it's not like a huge thing right. or anything. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's fine. I don't know. We're, we're, oh, we can't talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I nearly didn't, and I didn't. <laughs> don't know what I was going to say <laughs> just then. Beep. Sorry. I was just talking a bunch. No, listen, you know, if Spider Man's going to dominate the conversation, it might as well dominate our outtakes, right? Like... <laughs> yeah. This week, it was Star Trek a couple weeks ago. This week, it's Spider Man. Right. Yeah. I think the Next lesson week, is it'll... we pick one topic and we just talk about it for the entire <laughs> yeah, time. That's the theme. That's now. the lesson. Like my mother always said, one Ian is too much. I mean, so, it's, it's, like, you're, that's it's weird. For many she was reasons. that specific. <laughs> your, your mother always said this. Yeah. This is uh, yeah. Okay. It's very very specific yeah, yeah. about Ian. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's amazing. English Ians. You only need one of them. <laughs>